No one thought that residential redevelopment and a new city hall would be enough to save Sassoon City. They needed business, they needed jobs. So the city became its own redevelopment agency, building on its strengths. It bought substantial amounts of land where its roots were, on the waterfront. And to encourage small business to come back, it restored its historic main street. Tom and Donna Bland own the great Sassoon Coffee and Trading Company. You can look and see it at the, uh, the downtowns around uh, the country that, that are successful. The thing that draws them and the thing that creates a sense of excitement in downtown is, is not uh, the shopping mall atmosphere, it's, it's the, the historic atmosphere mm -hmm. of, of the downtown. The, the quaintness of the buildings, and of course here we have the water uh, to uh, play off of on the other side of the street. We could have gone to one of the shopping centers, but decided no, that we wanted to be here. And I'm glad we made that choice. We've got the uniqueness with our shop, its history, the history of the town, and our garden in the back. Sassoon provided basic design services and incentives for Main Street businesses to improve their storefronts. To rehabilitate the nearby waterfront, the city ripped out the old warehouses. It dredged the harbor and cleaned up the water. It provided streets and utilities. It built a marina a civic plaza and a waterfront promenade, and it rehabilitated an historic train station. The city cleared and prepared the land for new businesses. They offered architectural design services, low interest loans, infrastructure, and reduced red tape. Babs Curlis was the first, opening Babs's Delta Diner in 1994, the kind of place where everyone has a coffee mug with a name on it. Small businesses. Uh, know their business very well, but uh, real estate development is a complicated process that they may not know much about, and that's why our process is set up to assist them every step of the way. Without the role that the city and Cameron's uh, agency and himself have taken, uh, how could uh, a small business person like Babs go in and put the parking lots and, and think about the streets and think about all these things that are really not part of her uh, life? No, not at all. I never worried about it. I just knew he was going to take care of all that. This ability to redo the, the, the town all over again has given us the opportunity to uh, do a well-planned project where parking is in the right place, landscaping is in the right place, the relationships between the different uses are uh, properly laid out. There's an obvious question. How can such a little town with so many problems afford all of this? Well, the simple answer is they did it the old-fashioned way. They borrowed it. $58 million in municipal bonds, a real stretch for a place like Sassoon City were it not for a handy development tool. In 1991, Sassoon City declared the entire sprawling city a redevelopment area. That made it eligible for something called tax increment financing. Here's how it works. The city borrows more money than its present property tax base will support, betting that new growth in property tax revenues generated by the new development will be sufficient to pay off the debt. It's a gamble, like putting City Hall in an unexpected place. But the biggest gamble in Sassoon City was the willingness to take a hard, honest look at themselves. One of the things that happens to you is you, you think in, in terms of what the bureaucracy can do, and it's, it's just a, a long tradition of, of red tape and, and thinking and how you approach things. And the first thing you want to do is get out of that box and start looking at things creatively. Get people that have have that vision or people that are creative and innovative. If a community takes the initiative, identifies where there are areas of the city where transformations can take place, uh, they can in fact achieve uh, that goal and it is an achievable goal and therefore from that standpoint Susun is important because it's a model that you can in fact affect change and you can affect the quality of the environment that you're in and you can have something to do with it you're not just the captive of others who will in fact dictate what the place is going to be like what kind of city would you like yours to be what can work in your own community to get to a higher and better quality of life now and for your children these very different stories from portland Sassoon city and chattanooga do have some ideas in common all three looked to the built environment they decided that quality mattered 
that they could use architecture and planning to bring people together, literally and figuratively. All three cities decided their future depended in large part on their downtowns, the very hearts of their cities, the ground very often on which their cities were born. This too they had in common, the search for their roots and their traditions. Notice they all returned to where they came from, the waters of the Tennessee, the Willamette, and the Sassoon Channel. All took charge in some form of their future. They literally designed it. They made plans and wrote rules and processes that turned out to be almost more important than the results. They involved people, lots of new people.